Computationally, it uh, is not the most efficient uh, algorithm. And people have uh, come up with uh, other algorithms. So, so we call these the automatic cast pattern generation algorithms. So the challenges in test generation have uh, fascinated people and uh, uh, and people have worked on uh, refining the algorithm. So basically, it turns out that uh, uh, it really depends on what kind of examples you choose. And, and there is a set of uh, benchmarks that people have uh, come up with and then they apply different uh, algorithms to these benchmark examples which are realistic uh, circuits and then they try to compare the results and uh, so they come up with uh, so there was somebody came up with uh, something called Holden uh, Path Oriented Decision Making 1981 and so seven times speed up relative to uh, the simple D algorithm. So they were very happy, oh, we can make our algorithm seven times faster. And then there was an algorithm called FAN by people in Japan and in 1983. So that they had the 23 times uh, speed up and then Let's uh, fast forward to 1997, and there is an algorithm called Taffer Schofer, must be somebody's name, in 1997. And the claimed uh, improvement is about uh, 25,000. So basically, uh, uh, um, it is possible to uh, um, make this a lot faster. Basically, uh, it is a question of heuristics. So no algorithm is going to be the best in all the cases. But using some benchmarks, they have done some comparisons. Test generation is an NP complete uh, algorithm. And that means uh, no algorithm is known which will uh, solve it in uh, polynomial time. Um, now, it has been suggested that typically the computation time needed is of the order of uh, n cubed, where n is equal to the number of elements. So the, the problem actually grows very fast. It's not quite exponential, but uh, it is fairly uh, challenging. And as I was mentioning, uh, problems arise if a fault is uh, untestable. Because in that case, your algorithm keeps on uh, burning your CPU time and it doesn't find a test. So typically, the algorithms, they uh, give up after a while. So this is uh, about the automatic test pattern generation algorithm. They have been around in hardware for uh, quite a while. Uh, similar uh, things have been uh, done in software also. In software, this came later. Okay, so now let us consider. Now, do we want to do this for every single fault? Probably not. Uh, because in a given circuit, you will have thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of faults. So, uh, you don't want to do this for everything. So, there are two things we want to consider. Fault collapsing and uh, reducing the number of uh, test vectors. So let's look at the idea of fault collapsing. So the idea is 
that we don't really have to consider all possible nodes. Oh, were there any questions on this? Uh, the algorithm. Now there is going to be an assignment. Oh, there's a quiz. So I think some of you already take it. When is the due? Is, due, is it due today? So, but anyways, if you have already taken it, you don't have to worry about it. So I think you can take it twice, right? So I uh, take the quiz, and uh, there's going to be an, uh, an assignment which will uh, 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 include uh, some of these things. Oh, incidentally, that uh, just reminds me, uh, next time I will not be here, and uh, uh, I have to see maybe if I can get a, a, a another speaker for this class, for this uh, Thursday. So there is a, 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 a workshop here in Fort Collins. So we have a, a presentation in that workshop. I have, I collaborate with uh, Jess Online and Electrical Engineering. So uh, I will be attending that uh, workshop. It actually starts today. Uh, but since it is here in Fort Collins, so I thought I might as well attend it. So I might not be here, but in case there is a, uh, uh, if I can find a replacement speaker, so we will have uh, something special uh, this Thursday. So basically, uh, uh, take a look at the announcement in Ram City. So in Ram City, I will give you the update. Uh, fault collapsing. So basically, we want to uh, reduce the number of faults to be considered. And in uh, hardware, there are two uh, uh, properties that you can consider for collapsing. One is the equivalence property, and other is the dominance. look at the idea of equivalence. It is a rather interesting idea. I should mention that uh, the, there is something equivalent to the equivalence idea here in software. But right now we are simply considering hardware. So let's define equivalence for hardware. So false, alpha and beta are equivalent. If f alpha is equal to f beta, that two faults are equivalent, then the normal function, uh, I'm sorry, if the faults are equivalent, then Faulty function with fault alpha and faulty function with fault beta, they are always same. That means they have the same response for any possible input combinations. So that means same response to all inputs. And here's a little example. We have sort of uh, used this already. Consider a, a stack at zero fault here and a stack at zero fault here. Stack at zero here and stack at zero here. Now obviously, uh, the two faults are equivalent. Now it is possible that this fault is because of something in here, this fault is because of something here, but it doesn't matter because a stack at zero here is the same thing as stack at zero here. So this is an example, it's sort of a trivial example of equivalence. And uh, now let us consider some examples 
of uh, equal balance for ordinary gates. Let's assume that we have an AND gate. So we are considering equal balance. Now okay, consider this here. And consider stuck at zero faults. Stuck at zero here, stuck at zero here, stuck at zero here, stuck at zero here. They are all equivalent. They all have the same effect. That output is always zero, right? So they are all equivalent. And that actually means that uh, if you have an N input gate, and by a, a, an N input gate, I mean the regular type of uh, gates, AND gates, OR gates, NAND gates, NOR gates. We are not uh, worried about thinking about uh, exclusive ORs here. consider n plus 2 faults and I will show you why. Let's assume that we have a NAND gate. Then these are equivalent. Any input stuck at 0 and output stuck at 1. They are all equivalent, right? For a NAND gate. And so basically, this counts as, as one single fault because they are all equivalent, so just one. And any input stuck at one, and if you have n inputs, then you have n of them. Right. So on, on a NAND gate, if it, uh, the stack at one for NAND gate inputs, they are not equivalent. And then you have the output stack at zero, and that is a uh, output stack at zero that is one. Oh, I, no, I, no, I noticed I just that there's I have a, a typo in my uh, notes. I should remember to fix that. And basically, this is termed as the equivalence fault collapsing. So you basically. Uh, take all the equivalent faults and consider them as one. Because if you have tested for one of them, you will have tested for all the equivalent faults. And uh, let me give you another example. OK, why don't I make it interesting? How about a, a NOR gate? So here. All these are stuck at one, and this here stuck at zero. So these are equal. Right? So any one of them stuck at one, or output stuck at 1, they all have the same effect that the output is, oh, sorry about that. I seem to have some mistake there. And output stuck uh, at 0. OK, how does this? 
Okay, that makes sense. 